Scotland have beaten Spain 2-0 in an actual real game, a, a Euro 2024 qualifier. How does Steve Clark pull off this masterpiece? And if you enjoy what I say and want to see what my haircut looks like once I get it done soon, subscribe to the channel. And if you hit the bell notification thing, it lets you know when we upload all of our videos. There's so many. Now, this is how Scotland line up, right? For a long time the problem has been, you've got Andy Robertson and Kieran Tierney, both excellent left backs, how do you get them in the same team? The obvious way is to play Tierney as a left centre back, Robertson here. A big absence has been a right back or a right wing back. The development of Aaron Hickey, who went from Hearts to Italy and then after Italy he's gone to Brentford and now he's excellent. So what we have is two brilliant wing backs and Hickey and Robertson, really important. And Ryan Portis has come through now as a centre back who can play at right back. So this is really integral to how Scotland play at the moment. But what happens basically is a bit of a pendulum thing. So Robertson is a left wing back and when they defend, they do come back into a back five like this, maybe a uh, four, something like that. And they try and show the ball wide to try and get the ball into these wide areas. When the ball's in these wide areas, there's no space to pass it. So it has to go back. And so a team like Spain who will naturally open up and try and make the pitch nice and big, they're going to leave lots of space in behind the counter attack. And that's one of the reasons that Scotland try and stay really narrow out of possession. So they'll be really, really narrow like this, have lots of players around the ball. If the ball then bounces loose into an area like this, there's loads of players around, you can suddenly snap onto it, win the ball, and then they can break. And the players who break will be the wing backs, Hickey, Robertson, and then the forwards, Christie, McGinn, and Dykes. It's all about lots of running, so they'll be putting lots of energy into this team to make sure that it works. Now, in possession, the way this pendulum works is that Robertson goes forward to be an extra winger. So what you get is a front three at times, which is Robertson and Dykes and maybe McGinn. So you get Dykes will be the centre forward, McGinn might be far right, Robertson will be far left, pushing on the last man. Pedro Porro is his opposite number here. Which means you've got Christie, who's sort of a left-sided player who can then be either between the striker and uh, Robertson here, or can drift into wide areas to give an extra man. And then because Robertson's pushed up, we'll give him the line so you can track where he's gone, that means that Tierney pulls across to be something of a left-back, then Hanley can pull across here, Portis becomes a centre-back, and what they've got essentially is um, either a back three or a back four like this. This is the back four like this. But Hickey tends to be more forward like this. So when Hickey pushes forward, Tierney's more in line. So the back three is more like this. So basically they've got a back four and a back three at all times, and then sometimes a back five. So what often happens is that when Tierney pushes up like this, you'll have Hickey here, and the McTominay will break to be one of the attacking midfielders to try and get forward. So what you get is a back five or five defending players, McGregor kind of anchoring it all in this position, and then you've got McTominay will break to join in attack. So in build up, they might do this sort of thing. What might happen is Hickey pushes up, Portius comes across, Hanley becomes a central defender, and Tierney's more of a left side centre back. So you get in possession this kind of diamond. This is very important. This is the kind of diamond they get here. And that's obviously formed by Robertson pushing up to get wide here. Now Christie pulls wide, so you've got an option to pass the ball wide. When the ball goes to Tierney, he can then carry the ball wide, which is what he wants to do, because he's a left back. That shape then changes to being more of a, a back two, with McGregor protecting it back here. Hickey pushing up a little bit to get involved, so it becomes more of a 3-4-2-1, forget the numbers actually. But then Tierney will carry the ball up here. Tierney then has a passing option wide to Christie, because Christie's moved out from inside position to wide. And then Christie can get into this position here, which means the ball can then go across to Robertson who can get in behind. And Robertson is essentially a forward in this position. He gets in behind, and as he gets forward, players will then chase him, they'll get back. He might chase someone like Poro and Poro might fall over, and then Robertson gets in behind, and as the defence tries to then block a number nine like Dykes going to the front post, what happens naturally is that there is space left behind for someone to attack from deep. And so if McTominay were to run in here, and Robertson were to play the ball across the box like this, McTominay might get a shot and goal. That might happen. And it is what happened. This is kind of the diamond we're talking about with McGregor at the, the top of it here. And you can see that further up the pitch with McGregor at the top. And this is Hickey pushing, well, he's starting to come back a little bit, but I've drawn this excellent line here. This is Hickey, this is Robertson, the two wing backs trying to push up. And then you've got the midfield of Christie and McGinn who are essentially forwards with McTominay. So it's almost like a defensive unit over here and an attacking unit here, but it just changes constantly throughout. So that's how they do it. Right, now if Tierney were to pull out from this diamond onto the left hand side, suddenly you've got an overload, you've got Tierney on the left and you've got Christie on the left, Dykes is around a bit here, but Robertson is further up the pitch. So as Tierney then plays this ball forward, what happens is Robertson gets in behind, he's a forward and that's your front three. McTominay runs into space, and of course, like we said, Poro falls over, Robertson gets in behind him, and because Robertson gets here, he can then pull the ball back for a runner like McTominay, and McTominay gets in and scores. That's how the first goal happens. And that's how Scotland took the lead. That was about seven minutes into the game. Spain naturally shocked by that. It's a really well-worked piece of play, overloading on the left. 
the pendulum of Tierney and Robertson causing loads of problems, but Hickey's really important in that. Another player who's really important in this whole move and the whole game is Ryan Porteous. That same goal that Scotland scored is one that Spain almost conceded um, 27 minutes into the game, and there's an example of how good Porteous was as being this right back and a centre back and how he reads the game. This is a player who was at Hibs for a long time, has gone to Watford, doing quite well there. It's a real step up, and we can see he's now an international level defender for things just like this. This is Jeremy Pino getting in behind. He runs past about three challenges, which is one of the only ways Spain were able to get in behind Scotland by dribbling through them because the passing wasn't working because of the, the closed compact shape. But when he does get in behind, He's going to run here and naturally the defender is going to look for a run going in between the centre backs towards this area here. But Porteous reads the ball really well, knows that Jose Lu is going to drop and so when the ball cuts across, he cuts out of the back line to close down this ball and stops a certain shot, if not a goal. It's a really clever read of the game from a centre back here. Lots of defenders would keep the line stay across this six yard line to try and block the ball across the box. The cutback is now a thing in football. We've got a video on cutbacks. Uh, it's called Why Do Arsenal Man City Keep Scoring the Same Goal? If you look at that on our channel, it's right there and it'll show you how that works. So that is one important thing for Ryan Porteous. And in all of the things that Scotland did were very good out of possession. So for context, Scotland had 25% of possession in this game, meaning Spain obviously had 75%. They dominated the ball. They had all the ball, but that's what Scotland wanted so they could hit them on the counter when they left space going forward. So when you open up like this, you leave lots of space to be able to counter-attack into with your, your fast lads. But the problem for Steve Clark is how do you win the ball back? How do you force Spain into giving you the ball? Now, a lot of the time they would let Spain carry the ball into these sorts of situations where they'd have it and everyone would push forward. And then when you get to here, as Spain, as Scotland hold their line, they can just pass it around. And then when you get to this sort of situation here, you close down, lots of players get around, and there's no option but to go backwards. And then Scotland, really, really disciplined, get back into their shape to mean that the ball cannot get forward into these forward players. So all Spain's possession is really around these sorts of areas. There's nothing really dangerous about it. And that's kind of what Scotland want to do. But there are certain times when there's certain triggers where Scotland players would jump to try and then win the ball back a certain way. So they want to try and show the ball into this wide area because that's where they have the overload. And when if Garcia, for example, pushes the ball wide, in fact, Poro came off at half time because he had a really bad game. Carvial came on. So they're playing the ball wide here and Scotland would push up a little bit. They're reading it, not going too much. But rather than sit in a 5-4-1 like this, what was actually happening was that Robertson was pushing right up because you had a back four in this high early phase. So there's like a back four early, Robertson was pushing up as a high presser. Think how good he's been at Liverpool at winning the ball back. So you put Robertson straight up, you just bait them out a little bit. So you get your front, maybe four like this. So it's almost a 4-4-2 four, four, in a little bit, but McGinn will be over here and making sure that the ball can't go to Martinez. If they think the ball is going to Martinez, McGinn comes up, he pushes it back over to Garcia. You've got Dykes will show a curved run to make sure that Garcia then has to put the ball over to this sort of side. Carvajal then is here. So with Carvajal, when he wins the ball, that is then the trigger for Robertson to go. And as he put, pushes onto Carvajal, he then has to make a decision. He has to clip the ball forward. If he clips the ball forward, you win the ball back and then you can start again. And it's a lot of uh, patient build-up in this sort of position. So this is what it looks like on the pitch. This is the back four of Spain, nice and wide. They want to keep the ball. Dykes is almost baiting uh, David Garcia to bring the ball forward and go with it. They're just waiting to engage. But they're not pressing. If he were to go now and get close without the rest of the team going with it, it would leave space for the passes and they could be passed through. Scotland have to keep their block the whole time. If they break that shape, there's uh, passing options for Spain to pass through. That's not what you want. So when the ball does go wide, then it's safe because now they suddenly have an overload or a bit more people in different positions to be able to win the ball. That is the trigger for Andy Robertson to go, to push on to him, to force Carvajal to clear the ball. Now Carvajal is a very good player. He's able to get the ball forward. Spain progress from there. But you can see the advantage of the block. This is the block just showing Spain to the left-hand side. There is no passing options. There's no way of getting the ball forward. Then it moves to the other side. Same thing, there's no real passing options. And then when the ball is pushed forward, it's trying to get a hopeful pass into someone, maybe dropping into this sort of space here. Kieran Tierney, who's both a left-back and a centre-back in this, in, this, uh, in this shape, engages, goes really quick. That's a trigger because the ball is loose. He engages, wins the ball, and then suddenly he can go on a run and carries the ball all the way up. And then as he gets all the way up here, he gets to this sort of position. The defense naturally drops back as in the first goal, which also happened about six or seven minutes into the half. And that clear space up here for Scott McTominay to appear. And who scores the second goal? Scott McTominay. So everything Scotland are doing out of possession works perfectly. Everything they're doing in possession works perfectly for this and Spain get caught out in the exact same minute of the game, which is kind of weird. And that's how Scotland won the game, but don't take my word for it. How about the words of Tomas Hill Lopez Manchero, who is an athletic reporter who knows far more about Spanish things because... I am actually you, Spanish, yeah. Spanish, so. perfect. Tomas, I want to ask you, what is the view um, from Spain and amongst Spanish fans 
uh, of this team? What, why was the team not good? I think there's a broad acceptance that these players are clearly not at the level of the multiple winners of 2008 to 2012. I mean, that era was a long time ago, but clearly Busquets retiring was the last last member of that 2010 World Cup winning squad to to be in the, the Spain team consistently. So I think there's an acceptance that the, the talent at uh, Luis de la Fuente's disposal isn't as good as it could be. Um, but they're also clearly trying to do something different as we saw a slightly more direct approach, which clearly didn't work yesterday. Well, what is it they're trying to do? I don't know, you can show me on the board if you want. What, is there anything they're trying to do in particular? Well, I found a lot they were they were trying to kind of look to, as you saw, Pedro Porro in the first half and Carvajal in the second half to kind of get forward, putting crosses for the likes of Jose Lu, who's going more into the box as a more direct striker, which is clearly an approach that we haven't seen so much with Spain. We you know, used to associate them with yeah. possession-based football, less with a kind of hulking centre forward. Um, but as I say, I mean, it was it was very clear yesterday, even with three of the top five scorers in La Liga in Jose Lu, Borja Iglesias and Iago Aspas playing at different times, um, you know, they still lacked a lot of firepower. Maybe this is just the, the talent that Spain have at the moment. Well, why is it that the team doesn't look as good as this one, for example? It's a good point. Like Pedri's injured, right? Pedri's injured. Gabi came on and didn't start. Fern yeah. Torres is not really playing for Barcelona that much. Danny Olmo was even involved. Alba is retired. Is he gone now? Uh, Alba's, Alba's sort of in and out of the in and out of the side. I think he'll still be an important important part of it. Uh, Simon's injured, obviously, but I think I think Luis de la Fuente is probably trying to experiment a bit. Clearly, the problem is that with actual Euro qualifiers, it's not quite friendlies in so much <laughs> as uh, you know you've got room to room to experiment. He's trying to do something a bit different. I, I'd say he still deserves a bit of time, but I don't think the Spanish press have been impressed at all with uh, what they saw yesterday. Yes, was the reaction good in Spain? Uh, no. And it shouldn't be, because Scotland won 2 0. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is home to some of the world's best sports journalists, including journalists dedicated to each Premier League team, so every fan gets the coverage they deserve, not just the big clubs. And you can try it for free now for 30 days. See the link in the description.